Hello, everyone. In preparing for this presentation, I was really excited. After waiting five months to get my hair done, I finally got an appointment. And then I didn't. Things were supposed to reopen, and then they didn't. And that's just the uncertain world that we're currently in. And although this is obviously a mundane example, and I certainly do not want to trivialize the more consequential and even catastrophic impact that the pandemic has had on so many people. In fact, I want to do the opposite. If ever there was a time where we needed to underscore the human and human factors, it's now. In a world where we've normalized burnout, inequality, exhaustion, where we continue to confront chronic uncertainty, we need to really think about how can we better position people for success. I lead a team called Human Era. It's a deliberate play on words with human error. And the reason for that is that we're trying to move beyond the current tendency in healthcare, which is often to view humans as the source of problems and blame them for the errors that they make. And instead, usher into a new era of healthcare where we encourage people to come forward with the errors that they make so that we can learn from them and in turn build better and safer systems. So my area of research is human factors. And human factors is essentially all about how to position people for success. So what I'd like to do today is highlight four principles that I've extracted from my team's research on applying human factors in healthcare that have profoundly changed not only the way I think about how we position clinicians for success, but how we position people more generally for success. So principle number one, know your context. Are you in a context of low uncertainty or high uncertainty? Or as Robin Hogarth would state, are you in a kind or wicked environment? Our kind environments are our low uncertainty context, wherein the next steps and goals are known. The patterns are clear and they often repeat themselves. When you do something, the feedback is immediate and accurate. And so work next year will look like work last year. Wicked environments are our high uncertainty context, where information is hidden, meaning that the next goals are not known, the next steps are not known. Here, the rules are changing. You're getting an influx of data and it might be changing without prior notice. When you do something, the feedback is delayed and sometimes inaccurate and work next year will not look like work last year or as we've all been living through in the pandemic, work tomorrow will not look like work yesterday. So the point I really wanna drive home here is how you position people for success under low uncertainty is gonna be completely different than how you position them for success under high uncertainty. Under low uncertainty, we know what the evidence best practice is, but this is just half the battle, especially when you're dealing with human beings, because the next thing we have to figure out is how do we ensure that they follow that best practice? So as human factors researchers, when we're trying to come up with interventions under low uncertainty, we're trying to decrease discretionary behavior. We're trying to figure out how can we standardize a process such that everyone is doing it in the same way that we're all rowing to the same beat. And in, in essence, what we're trying to do is remove the decision-making as much as we can from the action. So examples of interventions that work well here are things like checklists or better yet automating a task or the holy grail is creating a forcing function where you simply make it impossible to do the wrong action. Now, if we contrast that to our high uncertainty environments, again, this is where we don't have access to the evidence best practice. We don't know what the solution is. So the best we can hope for is that we come up with a strategy that's gonna help people improvise, adapt and overcome that uncertainty. So as human factors designers, when we're designing interventions under high uncertainty, we're focused on increasing discretionary behavior. So whereas under low uncertainty, we're really trying to remove the decision-making as much as possible, it's the complete opposite under high uncertainty. Under high uncertainty, we rely on the human. It's hard to imagine a more important skill that one would need under high uncertainty than critical decision-making. So here, we're really focused on interventions that are focused on adaptation. And I would argue that in healthcare, we tend to overvalue standardization and undervalue adaptation. To be clear, both are needed, but knowing when each is required is key. So principle number one, know your context. Principle number two, recognize the drift. What makes healthcare particularly risky business is 
Not only do you have to have the skills to work well under low and under high uncertainty, but more importantly, you also need to have the skills to recognize the drift. Low versus high uncertainty is not dichotomous. It's, on, it's not dichotomous, it's on a continuum. And our research shows that low performing teams fail to recognize the drift. When low performing teams drift into higher levels of uncertainty, communication tends to dry up. High performing teams, on the other hand, when they drift into higher levels of uncertainty, they communicate, they voice that uncertainty and their thought process. We'll hear things like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm gonna try X, Y, Z. So the point here is that when you're trying to manage that drift, you want less certainty, more inquiry. In healthcare, we tend to overvalue certainty and undervalue inquiry. So if you wanna position people for success, recognize the drift. Principle number three, know how to define success. Under low uncertainty, the safety one definition of success, which is to define safety as the absence of error, works well. Because again, here's where we know what the evidence best practice is. So not only is it an aspirational goal, but it's our obligation to remove error when we know how to do so. But if we take that definition of success and extrapolate it to our high levels of uncertainty, we are no longer positioning people for success. Because again, here, we don't know what the evidence best practice is. So the safety two definition works better, which is to define safety, not as the absence of something, but by the presence of something. And that something is resilience. People's ability to bounce back absorb disturbance without breaking down, without catastrophic failure. Under low uncertainty, we're really focused on the outcome, zero error. Under high uncertainty, we should be focused on the processes. In healthcare, we tend to overvalue outcomes and undervalue the processes that got us to those outcomes in the first place. So if you wanna position people for success, know how to define success. And finally, principle number four, Know your people and know how to unite them. Just like we have low and high levels of situation uncertainty, we have different comfort levels. Your risk averse people are gonna be comfortable under low uncertainty. Your risk tolerant people are gonna thrive under high uncertainty. And you as the organization leader, you need to go back to principle number one and know your concept, know your context and be transparent about that context. If you've come up with a policy and you're not too sure about it, you're over here. You're not sure if you're gonna to need to change that policy tomorrow. Let your risk averse people know that. Let them know that you know that that makes them feel uncomfortable. That you recognize that they would much prefer that you would implement a policy and guarantee that it will not change tomorrow and that you will ensure that everyone complies to it. But you can't because that's not the context that you're currently in. Just being transparent with them about that will show that they're being heard and will show some compassion. Likewise, when you do come up with a policy for which you do have evidence best, so it is an evidence best practice, so now you're under low uncertainty and you want to ensure that people comply with it. If your risk tolerant people fail to comply to that policy, you want to resist the urge to chastise them for having failed to comply to the policy. Because after all, to err is human. And so instead, what we want to focus on is what have we learned from this and how can we move forward together on a common front? In healthcare, we tend to overvalue being right and undervalue getting it right. So if you wanna position your people for success, know your people and know how to unite them. And how you're gonna unite them is by being clear on what you value. So to summarize, if you wanna position people for success, know your context and value adaptation over standardization, recognize the drift and value inquiry over certainty, Know how to define success and value the processes that got you to your outcomes, not just your outcomes. Know your people and how to unite them and value getting it right over being right. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this opportunity and it's my pleasure to now hand things over to Karthik.